Greetings. It's good to see you all again, or, or you guys are looking at me. Let's get started today. I love doing these Nugget of Troops. They're like 9 to 10 minutes long, and I'm trying to get everything in here so you guys can get a hold of what I'm trying to teach. Today I want to talk about pretty much the same thing I always talk about, but I can't get away from it until he tells me to get off of it. I want to talk about really Jesus, what he, what, what he did for us, and what belongs to us. I talked to you last time about um, Ephesians 1.3, that we already been blessed with all spiritual blessings in the, in the heavenlies. So when most people hear that, they don't really understand it. And that makes me want to go back and teach it again. Because I feel like maybe it's the way I taught it or whatever. The reason why people don't receive from God when, they ask, when they're in prayer or whatever is because they are still expecting God to go that, come down from heaven to give it to them. But really, in reality, concerning the Word of God, He's already blessed you. So why are you still expecting people to pray for your needs? Oh, I need a house, or I need a car, and I need, uh, I need healing in my body. He's already given that to you. He gave that to you when, through Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was here on the earth, and when He died, and, and He took sin on, on, into Himself and became sin for us, that we may not, that we can be passed on from death unto life. In other words, we'll be born again. So we, he already done what we asking him to do for us. That's where the problem is. And I'm noticing I'm having a lot of prayer. My prayers are being answered quicker after I get to teaching you guys what I already just learned myself. Um, let's go over here to. Um, okay, let's go over. Let's, let's go over to Colossians 2:15. Colossians 2.15 says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. In other words, Jesus already defeated the devil. He, did, he defeated the, I personally believe that he defeated the devil in the, when he was tempted. When he went to the word, it is written, it is written, he defeated him then. I don't believe that he defeated him when he went to hell. Oh, he was, when he died and became sin for us. In other words, he wasn't born again. He, loved, uh, he had to become just like us and he went straight down. And uh, he didn't defeat him then. He already defeated him. That's why, and that's why he was able to come up like he was. God gave his spirit back to him because he didn't have no right to put him there in the first place because he became sin for us. So in other words, he already won the battle. So what are we doing? We still wrestling with the devil? There are churches out there right now, and I'm not pointing fingers, that they are trying to war against the devil. They're trying to fight the devil. Really, if you really think about it, the devil is not our problem. Your friend is not your problem. Your wife is not your problem. Your dog is not your problem. You are your problem. When you begin to stop looking at everybody else, and I'm not trying to be mean today, and begin to look at yourself, and begin to realize that, that you are holding back what God has for you. In other words, the blessings are right there because we have his nature now. We're now when we got born again, we have the same spirit that Jesus has had when he walked the earth. So that means I can be like Jesus? Yes, you can. You cannot walk in his deity, but you can definitely walk in his humanity when he walked the earth. Yes, we all can walk like that, but teachings in different places we've been taught us that we never can measure up to Jesus. He said in his own word that, he, that greater works than, than you, you would do because I would go to my father. So in other words, he already set everything, the stage, right for all of us to receive all that he has for us. But we have to begin to use our mouth, speaking his word, and begin to, begin to uh, enlarge your vision from your heart, to seeing yourself doing these things. And that's the only way you're going to begin to walk in it. That's the only way you're going to begin to receive what God has given you. And I, I thought of Paul. I'm trying to make this quick here. Uh, Paul had the same problem, believe it or not. He began to stop the tests and trials that Paul went through. I mean, he was three times his, his foot was broken. Uh, he was whipped. He was stoned to death. He was in shipwrecks. The same, not quite the kind of trials that we are facing right now, maybe in different countries, but he faced a lot of those tests and trials that we're facing today. And then eventually he, got, he began to get weary. He said in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 12, 7, Unless I shall be exalted above measure, though the, through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, 
a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I shall be exalted above measure. Most people look at, well, Paul had a thorn in his flesh, so that means that thorn was really his eye. He had an eye disease, or he was sick in his body, and that's why he, had, he said it was a thorn. No, he wasn't sick in his body. No, he wasn't. During that time, a lot of the people would say, like what we do today, like, the, like in the 21st century, we would say something like to each other, man, you're tripping. You're tripping, man. So that doesn't mean he's actually falling. No, that's just a, a slur of words that it means that you, you're not doing right or whatever. So during that time, that's how they talked to each other. They said that you, you're just like a thorn in the flesh. You're bugging me. That's what, that's what Paul was saying. He's saying, these attacks that the devil is sending against me through different people that was following him, telling the group, every, when he would leave a different area, they would follow right behind him and, and tell the people that uh, don't listen to Paul. He is not a right. He's not right. You, this, he's, this, you need to stay under the law. We should continue to do what we did with circumcision and all of those things. And Paul had to go back and correct it. And then we go, everything he would touch, the devil was right there to try to stop him. So Paul began to just get weary. He said um, three times, he said in verse uh, uh, 12, 18, 12, 8, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 12, 8, he said, For this thing I besought the Lord three times, a thrice, 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 three times, that it might depart from me. In other words, he's like, Lord, come on now, this is too much. You got to help me right here because I, I can't do this myself. I need you. I need you to come down from pretty much he was saying, I want you, Jesus, to get off the throne and come down here and help me. Get this off of me. Get this doggone stuff off of me. And then and God began to speak to him through uh, 12, uh, the 12th chapter, the ninth verse. He said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my weak strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon you. In other words, he was saying, I already done it, Paul. I already done it. He said, no, you, three times, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I know, these, I know the enemy is coming against me because of the praying in tongues that I did, the mysteries. I begin to pray up those divine secrets. The Holy Spirit begins to give me the understanding of what's going on, and I begin to write this, and I begin to change lies, and I know the devil is trying to stop me as a result of me praying in tongues, because Paul said, I thank my God I pray in tongues more than you all. So I know that, but this is ridiculous. And so God said, my grace is sufficient. What was he saying to Paul? He said, he said, my grace, Jesus died, he became sin for you, Paul. He became sin for you that's struggling through whatever circumstances or sickness in your body or whatever you're going through. He already died for you. So that means he already took the sins of the world. The sins of the world is everything that you're going through, everything that you're facing right now. No job, uh, economy, uh, sickness in your body, uh, whatever, divorce, or whatever you're going through. He already died for that. So now he wants you to do is to take his word and begin to speak to what his word says about your problem. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is taking his word and begin to call yourself free when you don't feel like you're free. Begin to worship God when you don't, when you worship God to fix your problems? No. I'm talking about worshiping God, letting him know it's already done. Is he going to fix it because you're letting him know it's already done? No. You, your faith is going to rise up to the potential to re begin to cause those things that be not as though they were to begin to operate in your life. God already done it. Do you think Jesus is going to get up because you're worshiping him? No. He's just going to be happy that you're doing what the Word says to do. The more you worship God, the more you worship God, it's, you worship Him, it's going to help you. And the more you begin to thank Him for what He's already done for you, it's going to help you. And that's when Paul began to realize that uh, he already done it. His grace is sufficient. So what is I'm doing with complaining for? I just worship you, Father, that it's already done. Not to get you to move, because you already moved, but to get myself to believe what you already done. So, some of you all right now are struggling in finances right now. Some of you all are struggling in sickness in your body. Some of you all are struggling with just dealing with people. Some of you all are just going through it in any which way but loose. <laughs> but you know what? He already fixed those problems through his word. He said he already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. So what is your job? Your job is to take his word and begin to act like it's true. I tell people all the time, fake it till you make it. Wow, that sounds weird. But you know what? It does sound weird, but it's so true. 
when you begin to fake it, act like the word is true, and eventually the manifestation of what you were looking for to happen in your life will begin to be manifested in your life. I don't, I don't go to God with problems anymore. There's nowhere in the New Testament that says that we're supposed to pray that God will fix our problems. He already done it through Jesus. So now that I'm born again, I just thank him. I thank him that I'm already free. Why is I'm thanking him? I'm thanking him because it's helping me to believe what his word says. Now, I give God nothing but the love of God because he's my father and I have his nature. I thank you, Lord. I love you and I love you. I'm not coming to you for anything. I'm just thanking you because I love you. And the more I worship him because I love him, what will happen is it will do something for me. And it pleases my father when I walk by faith. That's what his word says. So I'm going to let you go with that. Um, I love you guys. I don't know if I went over 10 minutes or not, but praise God. I'll see you guys next time. God bless.